In this topic, we are going to talk about pre-departure training and the aspect of pre-departure training, which is cultural awareness programs. Uh, most of the pre-departure training, as we have discussed in the previous topic as well, that it is directed towards developing cultural sensitivity and uh, uh, giving a cross-cultural uh, orientation to people who are going to a new culture. So pre-departure trainings, they are mostly um, uh, emphasized on cultural awareness programs. And these are what we are going to discuss in this topic. A well-designed cultural awareness training program can be extremely beneficial. Uh, why? Because it seeks to foster an appreciation of the host country's culture so that expatriates can behave accordingly. So it is not just that you uh, make them aware about the cultural aspects, you actually make, them, make those people appreciate the culture uh, of, the, uh, of the host country. So uh, they don't just know the features of the host country culture, but also they are, able, they are given such kind of training that they are able to appreciate the differences they are able to appreciate the features of the host country culture so that they are uh, pleasant and positive towards the culture of the host country. So it can be extremely beneficial if you are able to develop these kind of positive feelings in front of, uh, in, in the minds of people who are going to the new culture. Or at least if, the, if appreciation cannot be developed, at least develop appropriate coping uh, patterns so that uh, they can, if they are un, the ideal is that they are able to appreciate, and when they appreciate, they will definitely respond positively. But if they are not able to appreciate, at least make them capable of coping uh, with the situation and being able to show behaviors which are uh, appropriate for that particular culture. So uh, that is the usefulness of cross-cultural training programs. Components of these cultural training programs, they may vary according to the country of assignment. Uh, obviously, if the country of assignment is very much different in culture, then the components would, would be different. Then on duration as well, then the purpose of the transfer. What is the purpose of transferring person from for an in an uh, for an international assignment? For example, if it involves a uh, highly technical and mechanical work and less interaction with people, then um, obviously the training program does not need to be very much rigorous. And then provider of such programs that also determines you wo uh, training karwa kon rai. Who are the people who are available? So if uh, people are available for this training, kind of training, then you can go for rigorous training programs. But if people are not available, then you may not be able to, even if you realize that this is important, you realize you are ready to spend the money, you are, uh, uh, you are familiar with the fact that it would be problematic. But if people are not available uh, to provide the, the such kind of training, then obviously the components will vary accordingly. Uh, a study was conducted and we are going to discuss this study in various different aspects of cross-cultural training, which was done by Tung. Uh, it identified five uh, categories of pre-departure training that were based on different training processes, the type of job which is being uh, taken up, the country of assignment and the time available for training. So uh, uh, she developed a model for um, uh, evaluating different types of, of pre-departure training programs. Uh, uh, what she did basically is that she identified two dimensions to, de to determine the level of, uh, uh, to, to determine the level and vigor of the training. How, uh, how rigorous the training should be and what should be the level of that training program should the level be very high level of training or something which is low or moderate. So the dimensions which would determine whether you want to go for a rigorous and high level training program 
or whether you should go for a less rigorous and low level training program those are the dimensions which are identified by this research scholar and the these two dimensions are number 1 the degree of interaction required in the host cul uh, culture kitna interaction hona hai aap jis inter, uh, assignment ke liye kisi ko bhej rahe hain us shakhs ka culture ke sath kitna interaction hona hai agar usne office mein computer ke upar baith ke um, figures jo hain unko evaluate karna hai then it is something which does not which is not a high interaction uh, position but if a person has to meet a lot of people he is a sales manager for example then it is a high interaction situation so degree of interaction required in the host culture and then second dimension is the similarity between the individuals native culture and the new culture kitni similarity hai uh, uh, host country culture mein aur parent country culture mein this is going to determine ki aapko kitni training dene ki zarurat hai so these two dimensions they determine the rigor and level of training which should be given to a person who is going on an international assignment so the two situations could be that if the expected interaction between individual and members of the host country is low and the degree of dissimilarity between the individual's culture and the host country culture is also low then the training that should be focused on task and job related issues rather than culture related issues so agar uh, dono low side pe hain to phir aapki training jo hai wo aapko task related issues se karwani chahiye jo job ke issues hain jo technical skills hain unke upar aapko training jo hai wo focus karni chahiye rather than cultural awareness and the level of rigor necessary for effective training should also be relatively low because you would remember that people who are selected for international assignments are selected on the basis of the technical ability so technical ability is possible that it is already there so you may not have to train them a lot for task and job related issues uh, it would be something which would they, they would already be having and possessing therefore the level of rigor and the amount of training that needs to be provided to such situations that is low so low uh, dissimil dissimilarity and low interaction leads to task and job related training and the level and rigor is low in that situation and this is vice versa on the other side if there was a high level of expected interaction and the dissimilarity between the culture is also high then the training should focus on cross cultural issues a uh, cross cultural skill development and rather than on the new task and the level of rigor for such trainings should be moderate to high so a person who is going to be interacting in a very dissimilar kind of a culture would should be given a uh, cultural training and that cultural training should be given with a moderately high level of rigor and the level of uh, training should also be high uh, and so that therefore the person is is able to cope with the dissimilarity and is able to cope with the high level of interaction with people in the host country so this uh, model of tong is something which gives us direction about how training cross cultural training should be focused on different types of assignments this model is going to be further elaborated by uh, other authors which we are going to discuss in the next topic but this topic it uh, discusses the cultural training program from tung's perspective uh, so this was the discussion about cultural awareness training programs